Hello everyone, welcome to this EAG e-lecture series. My name is Walter Rietveld and I work for BP, a seismic delivery manager for the North Sea region. In a previous role for BP, I worked as senior seismic processor in Egypt and the work that I did there is part of the presentation that I'm about to give to you, which is entitled multi azimuth Streamer Seismic in the Nile Delta. And as you can see, it's a part one. We're mainly going to talk about the acquisition and the time imaging in this one. There'll also be a part two, which will be around depth imaging. Uh, the presentation I'm about to give was actually already shown at the 2009 EAEG Marine Workshop. Uh, you can see the authors there, my co-authors, and if you're interested in more information about this subject of multi-azimuth uh, stream seismic, I suggest that you look up uh, one of these authors for uh, more information. So in this uh, presentation I'll first start uh, outlining the uh, Nile Delta seismic challenges. Then we're going to look at some of the solutions to those challenges, which will be around multi-azimuth seismic. I'll mainly talk about time imaging and the processing, the time processing, and then we'll look at some results and conclusions. So where are we? We're in the Nile Delta. So as you can see, you can see the map here with the Mediterranean. You can see Cairo there with the green delta there, the Nile Delta, and we're just offshore there. And the data that we're going to look at is from the Raven Field, which is part of the West Nile Delta uh, development that BP is currently working on. So this is a typical regional line, uh, so you can see a dipping sea bottom uh, basically moving out from the coast uh, and you can see that the, the water bottom is reasonably rugose and then you have the Mycenaean layer which is really sort of the culprit of a lot of the issues that we have in the, in the Nile Delta. So the Mycenaean is a layer that was deposited a couple of million years ago when the Mediterranean dried up. So it's a, it's a, it's a layer that has all sorts of salts and sands and shales in it and the complexity of that actually causes sort of images, uh, imaging problems in the deeper section. Uh, but if we start with multiples, uh, that's a first, uh, the first sort of big issue here. So you see uh, water bottom multiples coming in, um, and then we have multiples between the water bottom and the Mycenaean, and the complexity of that. And then we also have, of course, interbed multiples as well, although those will be of a lower amplitude, but they're still causing sort of general noise issues. And the main issue to see or to keep in mind is as we go through into the deeper water, there's a lot of uh, uh, reflectivity right below the sea bottom. And that really starts turning on when we get into the deeper water. And that's causing a lot of these multiples to be three-dimensional and therefore being very difficult to remove in, in the processing. And then if we look at the Mycenaean in detail, and here we've basically had, uh, had a geologist looking at sort of the different uh, facies that we can find in one of these pots. So first of all, you see that laterally there's a lot of variation, but then inside these pots there's a lot of variation as well. So indicated here is that there could be shales in there, there could be sands in there, there could be anhydrites in there, there could be halite in there, and depending on, on the fill, of these pots, they will either have very fast velocities or very slow velocities. And depending on what velocity is in there, it will create either a pull up or a push down, but it will definitely create sort of uh, imaging issues right, right below these, uh, these pots in the Mycenaean. And those pots actually start increasing and getting more complex as you move from the shallow water into the deeper water. Choose cause ray bending and therefore you can either get sort of uh, energy being scattered around or you can get, uh, get shadow zones as well. And as I already said, the Mycenaean complexity basically increases with water depth. So as you move away from the coastline, you'll basically start getting poorer and poorer data in the pre-Mycenaean section, which is where the Raven Field was discovered. Just to illustrate those illumination uh, challenges here, here we're looking at a DMO stack. So you can still see some of the diffraction tails in there. And you can see very clearly sort of the vertical striping of amplitudes. And when you migrate that, you can see that these sort of vertical stripes basically turn into these nice sort of migration smiles. So even though some might actually say that some of the things that you look at, sort of the annulations on these reflectors, are caused by pull-up, in this specific case they're actually more caused by uh, migration artifacts than, than actually pull-up. No matter what it is, it's something that you want to resolve because you want to try to get this close to the real structure that's there. But these are the sort of illumination issues that you have when you have just a single toad streamer sort of survey to work with. So in short, when we look at, uh, at, the, uh, at the Mediterranean, basically from about a water depth of about one and a half second, basically you go from fairly decent data quality on the right side in this picture 
to quite poor data quality on the, on the left side of the picture, especially in the deeper section below the Mycenaean. Uh, just to summarize, the issues in the Nile Delta are complex multiples. We have velocity model complexities associated with the, uh, with the Mycenaean, which also cause illumination issues, and then just general sort of noise levels as well that we need to resolve. So why did we think of multi-azimuth seismic? Uh, well, first of all, if you look at the image at the top right corner, you can see a CDP with a full azimuth uh, view of what a, uh, what a diffracted multiple looks like after NMO correction. And you can see that there's still move out on there, but the apexes of these diffractors uh, sit at non-zero offset, which means that they start stacking in. If you think about just a single toad streamer survey, they would effectively sample one line through these surfaces, which means that when you stack them up, that these apexes will actually stack in quite strongly. If you sample that whole surface and you stack it in, you actually get a far better suppression of these events, which is a good thing because they're quite difficult to get rid of in processing. Also, by acquiring data in different directions, you get better illumination because you might be able to actually start undershooting some of these smaller features that, that we see in the Mycenaean as well. More data means more fault, which generally will reduce the noise levels as well. And the other thing that you get for free by acquiring this more data is that you effectively get a larger antenna and therefore should also get a better resolution. So, how do you acquire multi azimuth seismic? It's actually quite simple. You get a big boat, you put the streamers out as you would do for a, uh, a regular seismic survey, and you shoot it in different directions. And in this case over Raven, we actually shot it in six different directions. About 630 square kilometers of seismic, streamer length was about 6K. Processing flow. We all know how to process toad streamer data, and that's really what we're doing here. So if you just look at the boxes on the left side, you start with general sort of noise suppression, then you run your demultiple, in this case a 2D SRME algorithm. You run a Kirchhoff time migration. You pick your residuals and then you stack your data. It's just a common way that everybody knows how to do toad streamer data. Only in this case, we got six data sets. So we run it six times. And the only thing that we do slightly different maybe than what you would usually do if you would process them as individual surveys is that for the migration, we use the same velocity. So the KPSTM, there was a single velocity field that we used for all the surveys. We did pick individual residuals for each of them in trying to flatten the gathers as much as possible. When we did that was actually do continuous velocity analysis. So we didn't pick on a sort of a 100 meter or 500 meter grid, but we actually picked every CDP to try to get the data as flat as possible. Now, because we've already shown you that there's velocity issues that probably require depth imaging, uh, we also did some other things to try to get our gathers as flat as possible. So we applied trim statics on each of the, uh, on each of the surveys, and then after stack, we again did that before we actually stacked all the data together. It's a pretty standard sort of toad streamer processing sequence followed with a bit of trim, and then a bit of trim before we actually add all these surveys together. Now, what we're looking at here are some gathers uh, deeper in the section, so four to eight seconds is what you, uh, what you see here. And the gathers are in this case 360 fold. We have 60 fold per survey, so we have 360 traces going into each CDP. The way they're sorted is from small offset to large offset, and then within each offset class we go from one azimuth to the next. So there's sort of little patches from six azimuth pairs that basically go along with offset. So you see the small scale jitter due to the azimuthal variation, and then you see the longer wavelength variation as a function of offset. These gathers don't look that bad, but you can see some obvious residual move out in there, which if we pick, you can see that we start flattening the gathers and also some of the jitter goes away, but not all. And the only way that you can go the next step is by applying trim statics, which is a little bit like black magic. So you have to be very careful on how you do that, because with trim statics, you can make look anything like anything else. And that's not really what we're after. So you have to be careful how you parameterize that. But if you do that, and I go back and forth between these two, you can basically see that you really start flattening all these events and you will be able to actually stack all these six surveys up very effectively. So what does that mean when we start looking at the final result? Here we're looking at the shallow section, zero to four seconds. You can see the very strong Mycenaean layer there quite close to the bottom. This is a single azimuth stack. You can see sort of channel systems up shallow as well. And this in itself is actually quite a good sort of image. You wouldn't basically walk away from this. So now we're going to start looking in a couple of places indicated here. 
So the dashed uh, orange line is an indication, my PowerPoint indication of where the water bottle multiple would come in. So you can see that the SRME was very effective, it removed it. But you can also see sort of the haze of noise that sits behind it. And that's really the diffracted multiples that we haven't been able to remove yet. The red circles basically give you a, a pointer to where to look to when we go to the next image, which is the multi azimuth image. So this is the six volumes stacked together with all that trim statics and other stuff in it. So if you look at this one, you immediately see that the signal to noise ratio actually has improved. So that's definitely what, what we were after. If I just go back and forth, you can basically see that. You can also see the most left sort of oval that's there, red oval, that the resolution has, has improved on that fold that you can see there. It's a lot sharper, it's a lot better. And then back on the, on the right side, you can also see that that's actually a lot better as well. Now if we look in the deeper section, you can see here some of the effect that we already uh, said that would happen. You can see some of the, some of the, the reflectors are not as flat as they are, um, and there, there's obviously some issues here. Um, these are the places to keep an eye on. Single azimuth stack, and this is the multi azimuth stack. And you can see the same things that are happening up shallow, which is sort of a, a pretty box standard sort of area where, where you would expect time migration actually to work pretty well. Down deep we see the same benefits. So again, the top left oval shows you a fault that has actually really got a lot better. And then these other areas that you can look at, you can see further improvements. So by adding these additional data sets acquired in different direction, we really are starting to get a better handle on solving the issues that we have in the null delta. So suppression of diffracted multiples, just to highlight it, this is up shallow again. This is the shallow channel system on the right hand side that we already talked about. And you can see that going from one azimuth to six azimuth, we really got rid of a lot of that noise that you saw there from those remnant multiple. So if we start looking at amplitude extractions, we're looking at, at the pre macinian here. Uh, the top image is for single azimuth, the bottom image is for the multi azimuth. You can see that in the, in the bottom image we have a lot more continuity on the amplitudes that we see. And we can also see a lot more detail, like for instance fault planes coming through a lot clearer. Now arguably the things that you can see in the multi azimuth image, once you've identified them here, you can also find them in the single azimuth image. But it's clear that the bottom image is a lot better if you're really looking at how to develop uh, this field optimally. If we go to the next amplitude extraction, which is from even deeper in the section, you see similar things. You can see the darker blue lines on the right hand side, where you can see a lot clearer where the fault planes are, and the amplitude continuity is, is a lot better. It's a lot less patchy, which also gives you a lot more confidence that what you're looking at is a true indication of certain lithology or hopefully even fluid fill. So, if you could ask me a question, would be, isn't that just due to fault? We're looking here at comparing 60-fold data to 360-fold data. So we got six times more data, so of course the image will be better. Well, the answer to that question is no. Um, there's actually more to this, and it is really the, the wider azimuth distribution of the data that we have available that gives us the uplift. So to illustrate that, I basically did a little experiment in the computer. So on the left-hand side is a single azimuth that we're looking at using all offsets, so 60-fold. And then on the right-hand side, we're going to be looking at a multi-azimuth image, where I've basically subsampled each survey to only have one-sixth of the, of the offsets available. So that's also going to be 60-fold. So here we have the single azimuth stack in the deeper section. This is the image that you already saw before. So the next one is a multi-azimuth, but equal fold image. And if we look at those and we go back and forth between them, you can see that even some, that not the uplift is as good as you would get with the 360 fold, but a lot of the benefits of the multi azimuth are already coming through. So fold itself is not good enough, but it's fold with azimuth variability in there that's basically giving you sort of the uplift in the image. Now, of course, you have to realize that you don't want to acquire your data just every sort of six offset, because you do need that, that denser offset distribution in your processing, for instance, for the SRME or a radon, if that's what you want to apply. So, um, I started uh, outlining the null delta challenges, which were diffracted multiples, lack of illumination and velocity complexity. I think what I've shown you is by using multi azimuth seismic, we do get a better handle at diffracted multiples, and we do actually improve the illumination as well. Now, the velocity complexity, I would argue, we haven't really nailed yet. The trim statics that we applied to get our gathers flatter does work, 
but it doesn't really solve uh, possible sort of uh, more complex velocity issues and for that we really need to go to depth imaging which is part of the part two presentation that uh, you can look at as well. So the solution that we've used is multi azimuth seismic but more in general wide azimuth seismic would do this. So whether you use multi azimuth or wide azimuth toad streamer as people have done in the Gulf of Mexico for deep water they will have similar features as what I've shown you today. And in shallow water OBC will actually allow you also to to acquire data in a wide azimuth sense as well. So in conclusion, we have uh, shown that mass data results in a step change in data quality, um, even after conventional processing. There's further improvements to be had by additional noise suppression and for instance the inclusion of a 3D SRME and the next step is depth, depth imaging and a tomographic velocity model building as well. One of the issues that we haven't really talked about is that actually stacking all this data together, you can start to be smart in that as well. So if one azimuth is extremely noisy in a certain area, it might actually be preferable to not stack it in in that location. Now that's, a, that's really a subject in itself, but it's something to think about when you start looking at your data. It's the reason why we mute our data sets as well before we stack, to get rid of stuff that we really don't want to have in there. A similar thing you can think about when stacking multi azimuth data. The other thing is that we haven't really looked at AVO and wide azimuth uh, character of AVO and attribute analysis. And that then starts talking about pre-stack data visualization for wide azimuth data. And that's again something to look into when you start working with this data. But a little bit beyond the scope of this, uh, of this paper. So I want to finalize with acknowledgements to uh, BP Egypt, uh, our partner at Raven, RW IDEA and EGES uh, for permission to publish. And I would like to thank you for your uh, for your attention.